Medical Schools in Canada, How to Get In. Hey, BMO Nation. Welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Bronza and I'm joined by my colleague, Meng. Hey, everyone. Now, we have nothing to sell you. It's just pure strategies and tips so that everyone has equal access to education. Now, in case you've never watched or listened to any of these before, there is no um, you know, visual effects or audio effects. It's completely unscripted. It's just pure content. Now we have 10 minutes to tackle a topic each week. And this week's topic is medical schools in Canada, how to get in. So I'm going to set the timer here, Mang, for us. Um, now, when it comes to the Canadian process, as many of you know, we are limited in medical schools as say compared to our neighbors in the US where they have lots and lots of medical schools to choose from. So obviously that means that it's highly competitive to get into uh, a Canadian medical program, but have no fear, we're gonna cover a lot of strategies here for you to help you out. I think the first one that's relevant to any applicant um, for medical schools and an application is really setting a good game plan of selecting the appropriate schools to get into. Um, you know, the acceptance rate for most schools is less than 10% and in some of the top schools and notable schools here in Canada. And that's precisely because it's very competitive, right? There's thousands of applicants that are applying and only a handful of them are getting in and are being reserved a seat. Now, when we break that down further, there's, you know, in province advantage versus out of province, there's international students. So, you know, depending on where you fall in that category, you really wanna make sure that you are, um, you know, not only noting down the probability, but emphasizing your areas of strength and ensuring that you meet the requirements, right? So do not put down a school to apply to if you do not meet the minimum requirements. And then obviously ensuring that uh, when it comes to the score, the GPA and the MCAT, you're within the average at least, right? You should be targeting the median range, but you're at least within the accepted average of, you know, the schools, the students that uh, were accepted in the cycle last year. Now, outside of the strategies for school selection, I uh, or actually, Meng, do you have any other notes to consider when it comes to strategizing on the school first and foremost before applying? Uh, yeah, I think for like one thing you already mentioned, Vanza, is making sure you know the stats. You should know that for in province versus out of province, or um, you know, in some cases, for example, the East Coast, the schools in the maritime provinces, they have a general regional preference for applicants who are from the maritimes and not outside of the maritimes. So, so looking at the difference in stats there is going to be quite critical because in Canada, when schools have a regional preference preference or in province preference, it's usually a very strong one, as in they mo mostly only reserve like single digit number of seats for out of region applicants. So unless you have a very strong tie to that region, if, um, if you're someone say living in Ontario, but you have a lot of family in the Maritimes, um, and you have experienced uh, living there and being part of that community. So unless you're someone like that, um, you may you you may not want to have one of those schools on your list because the chances are so 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 incredibly low. Um, there are also schools that, for example, um, um, I think Calgary will have. Um, different requirements in terms of MCAT scores and GPA scores uh, for those applying from outside of the province. So you want to take that into consideration because the threshold that you're trying to meet to even qualify is a little bit higher and then maybe the average of the applicants that actually end up getting accepted who applied from out of province are going to be um, much higher as well. So all kinds of things to consider, but especially for Canadian schools. Um, another thing that uh, you might consider if you're a Canadian applicant is if you are bilingual, if you speak French as well as English, then you may have higher chances getting into programs, for example, like 
the Northern Ontario School of Medicine because they prioritize, they prioritize candidates who um, are Francophone or who have ties to the Northern communities or who have experience with the Indigenous uh, population, right? So they're looking for a very specific type of candidate. So if you have one of those things that they're looking for, then your chances are going to be significantly higher as well. But I think the basics is what Ronza said, just do your research, make sure you know each school. There's not there's not too many, which means it's possible to know each school in and out and um, and then make sure you're targeting the ones that uh, where you have the highest chance of succeeding. Absolutely. So as you can see, your game plan starts before you even apply to schools. And that's honestly going to set you up for success and ensuring that you get in. So say, Mang here, uh, you know, I've noted it down. I, I see where I'm competitive. I see where perhaps I'm, I'm favored um, in the province. And I see the likelihood. Probably, I've done all my research. I've, I've wrote down the schools. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to be applying to the schools. Now we have to consider the application component. Um, you know, what, how, or how can we break this down to ensure that our students are successful and in increasing their chances of getting into a Canadian medical school? Yeah. Um, so first, for most schools in Canada, you apply directly to that school. The exception would be the schools in Ontario that have a common application system, but then you still have to potentially submit um, school specific uh, answers to essay questions. Um, so uh, I think now there are most schools in Canada actually don't have a personal statement. So that's not something you would have to think about. The probably the heftiest component of the application that students work on and that really will help to set you apart as a candidate is the sketch for that school. So there's the you know UBC activities section, there's like the Calgary top 10 experiences. Every school has a different name for this, but it's basically a sketch with a limited num amount of space for you to um, highlight the most standout activities that you've been a part of and and in doing so they want to see if you are a great candidate for their program they want to they want to see that you have a um, the core competencies that would make you a great physician they want to see usually a diverse uh, range of experiences to know that you are a well-rounded individual and that your competencies and skills are drawn from a lot of different avenues. Um, and uh, they're also, of course, looking for really strong verbal written communication skills. Um, and yeah, these schools are looking for the top candidates, people who are well-rounded and have all these skills that make them great students and also will make them great physicians um, at the end of the day. So that's probably the component to pay attention to the most for Canadian schools. Of course, um, you will want to be doing research about what each school is looking for on their website because it could be very different for Canadian schools. In the US, it's a little bit more um, unanimous, like everyone's looking for the same set of competencies roughly. But in Canada, it could be extremely different uh, depending on the school. So for example, if you go on McGill's website, they've listed something like 20 qualities that they're looking for. Versus if you look at U of T, the University of Toronto, they're looking for these four um, uh, really core uh, qualities in their applicants. So, so depending on what schools you are applying to, you want to make sure that that is highlighted in anything that's school specific that you're submitting. Absolutely. So I, I hope... Uh... For those of you listening or watching, you were taking down notes because men covered a lot of ground there. Um, you know, one thing else that we want to stress here is that you do not neglect your references. So making sure that you make those connections with your professors, reach out to them, give them ample notice, ample time, be respectful. Uh, they're busy as well. They might have other students that are asking for a letter of reference and ensuring that those individuals could attest to, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the skills that you're going to be outlining. Now, in terms of experiences, obviously, shadowing is not, um, you know, 
really uh, allowed in Canada, depending on the compliance issues here. So making sure that you are still finding ways and, and, and really getting those interaction, getting that insight, getting that exposure to the medical field um, and volunteer or any, or any sort of maybe virtual shadowing opportunity that you might have that's allowed and ensuring that you're gaining that insight so you can use it for your application so you can be, you can be competitive as an applicant. Now, outside of strategizing uh, you know, for the schools and making sure that it's appropriate and ensuring that you have an appropriate uh, or a game plan for your personal, uh, for your actual application, you wanna make sure that you know, you're able to deliver F in your interviews. And I think that we only have 25 seconds for this, but making sure that you understand the format of your interview, making sure you understand the questions, ensuring that you set up the simulation of what that interview might look like and having feedback after that is gonna really make drive you to uh, ace that interview and, and increase your probability of, of getting in. So that's all the time that we have, unfortunately, but Thank you so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, then please go ahead and share it with a friend and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them away in the comment section. See you next time.